Good evening, I'm Tim Caputo. What happened to Jennifer Dulos? Mystery that is gaining national attention. A mother of five vanishes. Prosecutors now have a theory as to what may have happened to her. People say the spouse did. I know, but her estranged husband becomes the prime suspect. The people that do not know me, they probably look at me as a monster. Tonight, an in-depth look at the case, the troubled marriage, and what happened on that fateful day last May. Mr. Dulos, where's the body? The clues police follow, the evidence we're now seeing for the first time, and the new developments one year later. Sunday, May 24th, marked one year since Jennifer Dulos disappeared. Tonight, we go back to the beginning. Mother of five missing for days now. The search is expanding for this mother. She has five children and she's been missing for nearly a week. Well, now we are wrapping up day 10 in the search for a missing Connecticut mother. As disturbing new details in the case are coming to light, possible new evidence that may point to foul play. At her home in upscale New Canaan, Connecticut, Jennifer Dulos was getting her five kids ready for school. At the same time, police say a killer was on his way. What happened on May 24, 2019 isn't an easy question to answer. Ultimately, police would charge Jennifer's estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, with her murder, but it would take a lot of detective work and hundreds of pages of search warrant applications to piece together this puzzle. It was a hectic morning in the Dulos household. Five kids needed to be up early and all of them ready to go to school. Mom had several appointments scheduled that day in New York City. At 7.58, Jennifer pulled out of her driveway to drop off the kids at New Canaan Country School. It was just up the road. A neighbor's home surveillance camera capturing Jennifer returning home just seven minutes later. It is the last time she would be seen alive. When Jennifer's car left at 10.25, police say she wasn't the one driving. They say her home had become a crime scene. She had been murdered, the home cleaned up, and her body placed inside her own Chevrolet Suburban, police say. Jennifer's vehicle was later found at a nearby park, according to police. They say less than 100 feet away, her estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, had parked a red truck he had driven from Farmington. The park and the truck were just three miles from Jennifer's home, where the family's babysitter arrived at 1130. She told investigators she went through the garage to get in the house. She reported one of Jennifer's cars was gone, but that was no surprise. She knew Jennifer had several doctor's appointments scheduled that day in New York City. But when she went inside, that's when she told police things weren't quite right. Jennifer's purse was on the floor. There was an unopened granola bar, a mug of tea on the kitchen counter. When that babysitter went to refill the paper towels, she noticed there were only two new rolls left. She told police she was confused because according to police, the babysitter had stocked up on paper towels the night before. I sat there and wondered what happened last night that they used 10 rolls, the babysitter would later tell police. She texted Jennifer at 12.43, no response. She must be busy with her appointment, she thought. At 1.10, the babysitter texted Jennifer again. She was on her way to New York City with the kids now. When they got there around 2.30, she texted yet again. Still nothing from Jennifer. And when she called Jennifer at 4 o'clock and it went straight to voicemail, she said, immediately my stomach sank and I had a feeling that something was wrong. As family and friends started to get concerned, they knew they needed to reach out to police. No one could get a hold of her, which was very unusual to them. Jennifer was missing. We love you so much and we just want you to come home. And you'd have to have a heart of stone if it didn't affect you. It's just surprising there's so many police officers around. If you have any information about her whereabouts or concerning her disappearance, please, please contact the New Canaan Police or the Connecticut State Police and help us find Jennifer. Police say they got the report around 7 that Friday night, nearly 12 hours after Jennifer was last seen alive. The babysitter let police inside Jennifer's home on Wells Avenue. They found what they believe to be bloodstains on the garage floor and on a Land Rover parked inside. They say it looked like someone had tried to clean it up police needed to ramp up their investigation. At the same time, phone records show Fotis Dulos, Jennifer's estranged husband, was on the move. Police affidavits show surveillance cameras spotted a pickup truck registered to Fotis's company. They believed that he had been driving in the north end of Hartford along Albany Avenue. A man who they say looked like Fotis appeared to be throwing garbage bags into different trash cans along that street, and he wasn't alone. Then, a break police were hoping for. They found Jennifer's Chevrolet Suburban at around 8.10 on the night of her disappearance. It was abandoned near Waveney Park in New Canaan. Coming up, 
authorities have looked for clues in the New Canaan Park, New York State, and Connecticut's capital city. The FBI is once again focusing their search here on the secluded woods of Waveney Park. The evidence police would discover inside Jennifer's home. What was in those trash bags thrown out in Hartford? Who was with Fotis that night? And Fotis's remarkably candid interview just weeks after his estranged wife's disappearance. He is well aware that many people believe he is guilty of murder. When something like this happens, 90 or 95 percent, it's the spouse. So I can understand why people feel like this. And your answer to that is? Well, I'm in the 5 or 10 percent category. In their pictures, they look like a close, happy family, a mother appearing to be full of joy with a smile so big and so bright it's hard to miss, a father posing proudly with his five children. Jennifer was uh, always a very beautiful person, and she continues to be. Fotis Dulos and Jennifer Farb were married in August of 2004. They'd welcomed two sets of twins along with their youngest. Their kids were into competitive water skiing, dad, their coach. Fotis and Jennifer lived a life many people only dream of. They called a multi-million dollar mansion in Farmington home. Fotis was a luxury home builder. Jennifer, an avid writer who graduated with honors from Brown University in Rhode Island and a master's in writing from NYU. She would often blog about the ups and downs of motherhood, constantly on the go, keeping their young kids occupied while her husband worked. Deeply genuine, compassionate, trustworthy, subtly hilarious, brilliant, and creative. This is how friends and family describe Jennifer Dulos, the person, the mom, and the friend. For years, they may have been the family they looked like in those pictures. Fotis later admitted their relationship was far from perfect when he was asked about it just weeks after Jennifer disappeared. I had my differences with Jennifer, like many people do when they go through a marriage. It didn't work out for us, but that doesn't mean that I wish her ill in any way. I'm worried about my uh, wife and kids because they uh, they left to go to New York and I haven't uh, been able to get in touch with them. I've been texting and I see that the texts are being delivered, mm -hmm. but nobody's responding to me. That call to 911 made on June 19th, 2017, nearly two years before Jennifer's disappearance. He was concerned about his family, unaware his wife, Jennifer Dulos, had taken their five kids from their home in Farmington and left. The next day, she filed paperwork with the courts for emergency custody of their five children and for a divorce. I am afraid of my husband. I know that filing for divorce and filing this motion will enrage him. I know he will retaliate by trying to harm me in some way, she wrote in those documents filed in court. Jennifer going on to write she feared Fotis would kidnap their children and disappear with them to Greece. She also mentioned being worried about the receipt for a gun box she found the day after she says she refused to sign a living agreement to allow Fotis' girlfriend and her daughter to move into their home. Fotis had already admitted his affair, that was no secret, but Jennifer Dulos was concerned because of how she said her husband had been acting over the past few months. Irrational, threatening, aggressive, enraged. All words Jennifer used to describe the man she had been married to for nearly 13 years. He has the attitude that he must always win at all costs. He is dangerous and ruthless when he believes that he has been wronged. Fotis' lawyers fought back, disputing every one of Jennifer's claims. They said Fotis never behaved the way Jennifer described. They denied he ever threatened to kidnap their children. And Fotis said he bought the gun in case he needed to protect his family. Their divorce and child custody battle was a bitter two year long back and forth. My motive has been for the past two years to move on with my life. I, um, I have five beautiful children. Uh, I had Michelle, and I had a, a profession that I loved. The couple had filed 300 motions in court before Jennifer disappeared on May 24, 2019. The family's babysitter would later reveal to police she'd witnessed many disturbing fights between the couple. In 2017, she heard something outside, only to find Jennifer Dulos crying in the driveway. She says Jennifer told her that Fotis had tried to run her over. Later that summer, the babysitter told investigators she saw Fotis chasing his wife through the house. Jennifer locked herself in the bedroom with the babysitter, who says Fotis was repeatedly pounding on the door trying to get in until he realized she was in there with Jennifer. Jennifer Dulos ended up getting full custody of the children less than a year later. Fotis tried for the next year to get regular visitation, but a judge ordered it to be supervised. 
On May 17, 2019, Fotis lost in court once again, just one week before his estranged wife disappeared. And when the family's babysitter learned on May 24th, Jennifer Dulos didn't show up to her appointments, she told investigators her, quote, first thought was that Fotis did something. People say the spouse did it. Mm -hmm. I know, but you know, I know what I've done and I know what I haven't done. So I, I, I have to stand and fight and uh, hope that the tooth is going to come out. When we come back, the evidence police say kept pointing them back to Fotis Dulos. When state police arrested Fotis Dulos at his Farmington home, he's wearing a gray t-shirt with no expression on his face. Police have found a lot of evidence, including her car, bloody clothes, but there has been no sign of a body. It took more than seven months for investigators to charge Fotis Dulos with the murder of his estranged wife, Jennifer Dulos. They needed enough evidence to try to prove he was responsible for her disappearance and death. But without a body, building a case would not be easy. Police in New Canaan, Connecticut were desperately trying to find Jennifer. Missing person signs were put up all over town. They even showed the flyer to drivers passing by Waveney Park, an area that became a big focus of their search. Police had found Jennifer's SUV abandoned in the park, about three miles from her home. New Canaan Police, State Police, and the FBI all carefully searching through a wooded area for any potential evidence, wading through a shallow pond, dogs sniffing for any trace of Jennifer. Their search would come up empty. The evidence police say they found in Jennifer's home the night she disappeared had already been sent off for forensic analysis. Police affidavits reveal investigators found what appeared to be blood on the hood and bumper of the Land Rover. It was on a door and a wall in the garage and appeared someone had tried to clean it all up. And all of that blood was a match to Jennifer's DNA, according to police records. But a blood-like stain on a kitchen faucet was a mixture of Jennifer and Fotis's DNA. Police found a shirt they believe she was wearing the day she disappeared, stained with her blood among evidence recovered from trash cans on Albany Avenue in Hartford. Police got a search warrant for Fotis's phone records and were able to track where he went on the day of Jennifer's disappearance. That night, they say he was in the north end of Hartford. When police looked at city surveillance cameras in the area, they say they saw a man who looked like Fotis getting out of a truck and throwing bags in different trash cans along Albany Avenue, driving further, throwing more away, again and again, at one point even stuffing a box into a storm drain. And he wasn't alone. Police say a woman who looked a lot like Fotis' live-in girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, can be seen on video helping him. She would later admit to police the driver was Fotis, and she was the passenger. When police arrived to search barrel by barrel, they also wanted to know what was in the box stuffed down that storm drain. Police say they found two Connecticut license plates that had been taped up to look like a different plate. It looked like 5T6 WBU. But when police started to peel back that tape, it read 516 WDJ. They say the registration on that plate number came back canceled on a Chevrolet Suburban once owned by Fotis Dulos. In those trash bags, police say there was women's clothing, a kitchen sponge, and zip ties, all covered with what appeared to be blood. They ended up testing a t-shirt, bra, paper towels, a sponge, a mop handle, gloves, the zip ties, and plastic bags that were taped together the affidavit shows it all came back as DNA matches to Jennifer Dulos. Do you know where Jennifer is? Is there anything you would like to say to your children? A little more than a week after his estranged wife vanished, Fotis Dulos was arrested, hauled into court in an orange jumpsuit with handcuffs around his wrists and shackles around his waist. So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you. The charges, tampering with evidence and hindering prosecution, but not murder, not yet. While Fotis was behind bars, police were continuing their hunt for clues. Police returned to the neighborhood where the trash bags were dumped, only to find some of the trash had already been picked up. So investigators expanded their search to a trash facility in Hartford where the garbage was stacked to the ceiling. They painstakingly and meticulously went through all of the trash, using rakes and shovels, looking for anything related to the case. They searched through 30 to 35 tons of garbage a day, 15 hours a day for nearly three weeks. Police also searched Fotis Dulos' home in Farmington. They found what they referred to as the alibi scripts, handwritten notes of what Fotis and his girlfriend had been doing the day Jennifer disappeared and the day after. 
They sounded familiar, they thought, to what Michelle Traconis had told them the first time they interviewed her. Now police were looking at her as an accomplice. The weeks were rolling by, still no sign of Jennifer. Fotis was now out on bond. He let a reporter from the NBC affiliate New York interview him. How do you think the public looks at you? It depends. I think that the people that do not know me, they probably look at me as a monster. Do you have any thoughts about that, about her disappearance or what's happened? I do, but I'd rather not speak about them. In September, Fotis would be arrested for a second time, charged with an additional tampering of evidence. It's an exhausting fight. I love my children. That's about it. We've pled not guilty to the pending charges. We're, we intend to plead not guilty to these charges, and we look forward to a full day in court. And with the investigation heating up, detectives say Fotis' girlfriend changed her story, now saying she didn't know where Fotis was the morning of May 24th. They say Michelle Traconis told them Fotis had borrowed a friend's truck around that time, and they had a detail, then washed not long after. Police asked her why. You showed me the picture of the blood in the door. That's because the body of Jennifer at some point was in there, she said, according to the police affidavits. And the friend who had that truck, he told police Dulos demanded he get rid of the old seats. Police say that's the same truck Fotis drove to New Canaan the day his estranged wife disappeared. A breaking news update in the three arrests in the case of a missing Connecticut mother. He has always maintained his innocence and he continues to do so. But today, the state laid out the roadmap of the circumstantial case against him, suggesting that the evidence shows that he attacked his estranged wife and restrained her with zip ties. Do you have any comment? How are you holding up? Excuse us, excuse us, excuse us. Excuse us, no comments. Excuse us. Mr. Dulos, where's the body? On January 7th, 2020, police arrested Fotis Dulos again. This time, they believe they had enough evidence to charge him with murder, felony murder, and kidnapping and the death and disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. Friends and family said, although we are relieved that the wait for these charges is over, for us, there is no sense of closure. Nothing can bring Jennifer back. We miss her every day and will forever mourn her loss. As far as we're concerned, Mr. Dulos is not guilty, and the warrants served today come as a great relief to us. They come as a relief because after months of listening to innuendo, suggestion, and rumor, we now have something to shoot at. If this is all the state's got, we wonder why it bothered. It wouldn't be long until more trouble for Fotis Dulos. It was not a good day in court for the man at the center of one of the most sensational crimes ever in Connecticut history. What he did was stupid. Don't do it again. He removed items that were there, put there for the purpose of taunting. Should he have done so? No. I'm asking that the conditions remain what they are. Prosecutors claim Dulos violated the terms of his release on a $6 million bond by stopping at a memorial for Jennifer Dulos near his home and removing some of the items. The state is trying to put together a case that Mr. Dulos is responsible for that murder or for that disappearance. Uh, and we take the position there's insufficient evidence to conclude that she's even dead. Coming up, the third arrest, an attorney charged with conspiracy to commit murder. And the moment no one saw coming. Breaking right now at 6, Fotis Dulos tries to take his own life at his Farmington home. Police looked at Fotis Dulos as their prime suspect, but they had their eyes on someone else, too. You gonna do the right thing, Michelle, and help the cops? Lying lover. That's what Fotis Dulos' attorneys called his client's living girlfriend, Michelle Traconis. The more police interviewed her, the more lies they said they uncovered. And she would quickly go from key alibi to key witness as police investigated the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. Where is she? Where is she? The day after she and Fotis were both arrested and charged with tampering with evidence and hindering prosecution, police say Michelle Tricones admitted to something that happened the night of Jennifer's disappearance. Police say Michelle told them it was Fotis driving down Albany Avenue in Hartford and tossing garbage bags in various trash cans, and she was in the passenger seat. Police say Michelle played a role in getting rid of that evidence and helping Fotis cover it all up. When they searched Fotis' home in Farmington, Connecticut, they found handwritten notes they referred to as the alibi scripts. It was a log of what he and Michelle had been doing the day Jennifer disappeared, and the next day, police believe they wrote it together. And they say it sounded exactly like what Michelle had told them the first time they talked to her. 
According to the police affidavit, Michelle would tell police Fotis was home that morning. They showered, got intimate, she made breakfast, but as investigators interviewed Michelle Moore, they say her answers got more vague, evasive, and contradictory than the last. And records show she would eventually confess Fotis was not at home the morning of May 24th. Police knew of the interesting dynamic between Michelle, Fotis, and Jennifer. Michelle was his girlfriend, Jennifer had filed for divorce. Police wondered if there might be tension about it. We fight all the time, Fotis had expressed to Michelle. He never thought Jennifer would do this to him. Michelle Traconis would also tell police Fotis had said to her, sometimes I hope she disappears. The day of Jennifer's disappearance, Michelle admitted to having lunch with Fotis, and the story was confirmed by both phone records and surveillance video. Then she said they met at a home owned by Fotis's luxury home building company that afternoon. The couple had to clean it for a client meeting the next morning, she said. That's when investigators told Michelle Fotis killed his wife and involved her in the cleanup. According to the arrest warrant, Michelle replied, but I was cleaning the house. I wasn't cleaning Jennifer. Investigators also questioned Michelle Traconis about a trip she made to a car wash, where police say surveillance video shows a key piece of evidence being washed. They wanted to know why Fotis Dulos would wash the pickup truck they believed he had driven to New Canaan to kill his estranged wife. Her response was shocking. It's because the body of Jennifer at some point was in there. Michelle Traconis would again be charged with tampering with evidence. You have the right to remain silent. And later, conspiracy to commit murder. A breaking news update in the three arrests in the case of a missing Connecticut mother. A third arrest? Another person connected to Fotis Dulos and Michelle Traconis also charged with conspiracy to commit murder. A friend and former lawyer for Fotis, Kent Mawinney. According to his arrest warrant, his name had appeared on the handwritten alibis for Fotis and Michelle. Kent Mawinney and Michelle Traconis have both pleaded not guilty to the charges against them. Their cases are ongoing. Michelle's attorney wants to see all the evidence police say they have against her. He's also expressed concern that Traconis may not have understood some of the police interrogation when investigators spoke with her before they arrested her for the first time. Her statements in the police interrogation were twisted in a way. And just three days before what marked one year since Jennifer Dulos disappeared, Michelle Traconis publicly broke her silence, speaking in Spanish. Hola, soy Michelle Traconis. Her attorney provided a translated version which says in part, as a mother, I am saddened for the loss that these five children have suffered, being left without both parents in such a short period of time. But despite the way I have been treated by the police, I know nothing about Jennifer Dulos's whereabouts or what may have happened to her. She went on to say whether or not Fotis Dulos was capable of doing those things the police and prosecutors accused him of doing, I do not know. But based on what I have learned in the last year, I think it was a mistake to have trusted him. And now, what would change the case forever? Yukon Fire for a medic and an ambulance expedited response to number four, Jefferson Crossing. No further details are available. That unit did bring another oxygen tank. Finally, breaking news right now out of Farmington. A police source close to the investigation tells NBC Connecticut that Fotis Dulos attempted to take his own life at his home in Farmington. It was a shocking twist. Fotis Dulos charged with murder in January 2020, but out of jail and under house arrest. Later that month, Fotis was called back to court for an emergency bond hearing, but he didn't show up. And police once again went to his Farmington home. They could see through a window that Mr. Dulos was sitting in his vehicle and he had obvious signs of medical distress. Fotis had locked himself in his garage where police say he tried to kill himself by carbon monoxide poisoning. These are new pictures from inside Fotis's home. The window on a door police busted through to get into that garage and the SUV that was parked there. Fotis' attorney, Norm Pattis, spoke to Fotis the day he attempted suicide. Obviously, the potential for a bond revocation was devastating news to him, but throughout he has been a fighter and resolute. In our review of the discovery, we very much liked our options for trial and we very much liked their possibility of success. So this uh, development comes as stunning news to me. An ambulance took him to a nearby hospital. From there, he was flown to New York City for treatment. Hospital officials remain tight-lipped about Fotis Dulos. Fotis Dulos was declared dead tonight at 532. He died two days later. Many saw Fotis Dulos' suicide as an admission of guilt. His attorney released this note, written in blue ink, which he claims was written by Fotis, proclaiming his innocence. I refuse to spend even an hour more in jail for something I had nothing to do with. The same for his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, and his civil attorney, Kent Mawinney, he wrote, signed Fotis. 
Putin held out to the world as a man believed to have murdered his wife, and every possible inference was drawn against him in every forum, whether it be social media, the court, walking to and from court, in the street, in stores. I think the weight of it is difficult to bear. I don't know that people who've not been accused can appreciate the savageness of the criminal justice system. Attorney Norm Pattis vowed to continue fighting to clear Fotis's name. A month after his death, the state stopped prosecuting his case. For the family of Jennifer Dulos, there's no closure. Even one year later, Jennifer still hasn't been found. Her mother now has custody of her five kids. A family broken and changed forever with plenty of questions. The biggest of them all, what happened to Jennifer Dulos? This is an open case and we'll continue to follow any new developments. Thank you for watching. I'm Tim Caputo.